going on, guys? Guys, Troy TXRC Productions. More importantly, drone and multi rotor tips, tricks, reviews, unboxings, all that stuff. Oh, uh, we dialed in the Voodoo 210 today with some new rates, and we were flying it, and it was flying the best that it possibly could. And then I made it land in some water. Well, I didn't make it land in some water, but I crash landed in some water. It was submerged for at least three to five minutes. Battery plugged in, everything. Foot underwater. Got it. What you see now is me literally taking the battery, the run cam off, and that's about it. I have done a quick spray down with some things that you're going to need to save your waterlogged quad, which is what this video is going to be about. I have Magnum Force 2 Electronics Cleaner. You can use whatever you want, but I got this from my local hobby shop, thanks to Nate and my main, main Mike. Um, we all were chatting about it, and I needed this, so I went ahead and picked this up. Have a big old bag of rice. Now, the rice is not really the savior here. In fact, I want to talk about something real quick. I see people try to save their quads all the time by just tossing in a bag of rice. Now, this is something that works for, let's say, an iPhone or a cell phone that's basically sealed, and there's really no way to get into the phone to dry off the main components and get a lot of the moisture out. So that's obviously going to wick away the, the water out of the component. Here, though, we actually have a lot of exposed components that are pretty much already dry or dryable. And then we have some other things like ESCs, um, and other devices or electronic uh, boards that are actually wrapped in shrink wrap. Now that shrink tubing or shrink wrap is taking water and keeping it trapped inside. So I could throw it in a bag of rice, but it's going to take forever to wick the water out when I can really just open up the ESC shrink tube and the other stuff like my X4R is actually direct soldered. So I actually rewrapped it in my own shrink tube. I'm going to open all of these things up, dry them off, spray them with the electronics cleaner, and then let them air dry. Now, when everything is, all of that is done, I'm going to then put it in a container with rice overnight to hopefully take care of any excess water or you know moisture that I haven't gotten 100% out. But I fully anticipate on getting most of the moisture out myself now, if it's not already. So, here we go. Um, take the props off. Now, my Run Cam 2 was also on board, and I don't know if I even have very much video if it recovered it or not of what happened, but that's actually my biggest concern is my Run Cam is going to probably be dead. Um, I, anybody that's followed me knows that I had actually this pre production model Run Cam 2, and I killed it on its first flight by landing upside down in water on a crash, which was a freak crash. Um, it never fully recovered. I can get it to power on every once in a while, but we'll see. So uh, props are off, prop nuts. Now, the one thing I did do was I've already used the Magnum Force on the motors while I was outside because I wanted to get them really clean and I wanted to make sure it was taken care of already. But something else you'll need, you'll want to clean off with the Magnum Force the motors and spin them by hand spraying all up nice really good inside and on the bottom and then you're going to need bearing oil and here i've got trinity royal oil from my hobby shop that i use on all my other bearings and i'm gonna put some oil on that bearing as well as the lower bearing This is really important because bearings are one of the worst things to get wet besides the motors. That's why I already sprayed the motors off really nice and good was to try and save what I can. 
Ideally, I would prefer to put the oil on the bearings and then actually run the motors at throttle, kind of run them and kind of really get that oil dig deep in there. But obviously, being that this thing is wet, I can't just power this thing on right now. So we're going to first do it this way as a quick maintenance now. And then once I get this thing up and running, once I've tested that all the electronics are good to go, I'll get it and I'll throttle it up and I'll let it oil up some more tomorrow probably. So there we go. Props are off. Bearings are now oiled. Feel better there. Next up, just time to basically break this thing down, man. Get it all taken apart. So I need to take the top plate off to get to all the components. So there we go, top tubes or top plates off. Exacto knife. I'm just gonna go ahead and slit off. I use electrical tape to secure my ESCs to the main frame. I use that instead of zip ties because zip ties can easily crush little pieces of the electronics, different components. And this is a much safer and cleaner look to me as far as making sure everything's nice and secure and not too tight. So upon taking all this off, I can already feel the trapped water under the tape. So that's what I'm trying to get to is I'm trying to eliminate as much water as I can before I go into the bag of rice. Because again, I mean, I could put it in a bag of rice, but it's just going to take longer. And during that time, stuff is actually still oxidizing. And that's your real problem with these electronics. Not, oh man, nothing is really going to short out because it's DC power. So the water is not going to really short anything. It's all in keeping the corrosion off of the pads and the solder joints and all of that. That's really your issue. As I'm opening these up, I'm definitely finding water stuck up in there, so. All right, so we have it open. Got my RX here. I need to pull it out. All right. There we go. Open it up.
once again, just trying to make sure that everything is dry. One of my antennas stayed glued to my shrink tube there. It's all right, I'll re-glue it later. So there's that. Now, just so everybody knows, I was actually already planning on switching over to a Lux board on this. Thankfully, I didn't do it yet. So, I'm not really too worried about the flight controller, though I've already also sprayed it off while I was spraying off the motors. Another big concern for me was my camera. It's an HS1177 and it's not, you know, the end of the world to lose, but it's definitely not the cheapest camera on the market. If it was obviously a $5 little Taro CCD camera, then, or uh, CMOS camera, I wouldn't be really as worried. So same thing here, we're gonna open it up. See if we can get some more excess moisture out that way. Actually, it looks pretty dry in there, is a the weird thing. So, we'll start here. Oh, wait, I have one more to open up. That's gonna be the VTX. Another area you don't wanna forget about. These things are shrink tubed as well. So just as much as I hate opening it up and making it no longer look nice and pretty, I'd rather it be working and save it. It's definitely soaking wet still. The cardboard wrapper is definitely toast. That's exactly the type of stuff we're trying to eliminate is all this paper. Paper's just trapping the moisture and keeping it there. So we're gonna peel, it's stuck on there with glue. We're gonna peel all this backing off of the heat sink. There we go. Cool. We are good. There. All right. So there we go. We have all of our electrical components on board that are opened up, ready to be cleaned. We'll take the cleaners. Spray everything down. Both sides of the ESCs. There we go. So 
we've sprayed it down. This will evaporate, though I sprayed it pretty hardcore. It's gonna evaporate pretty quickly. And when I'm done with that, I'm then gonna use this container and I'm gonna put, put my quad in there and I'm gonna cover it in uh, rice till tomorrow. Um, honestly, I think it would fly or at least start back up right now, but I'm not gonna chance it. I'm just gonna go ahead and take my time and worry about it tomorrow. Um, here's my camera, by the way. You'll want to clean that sensor off if you do what I just did, which was take it out of the case. Not a big deal. We'll do that. Um, one more thing to note is it is taking off the edge of my paint around the edges, but I'm fine with that. I don't really care, man. I just need this thing flying again. But that being said, you want to be careful not to rub anything on your sensor. So... I'm gonna go ahead and clean it off with a nice lens cloth, soft lens cloth now. Mm, that might not have been the best thing on the sensor. Anyways, we'll see. Sensor cleaned up just fine. Don't worry. So there we go. We got the camera situated and cleaned up. Let me double check the back side of that. Oh, a little bit of moisture. Cleaned off. All right. So there you go. That is at least my steps to how I'm going to try to save my wet quad. So there you go. Fly safe, fly smart, fly for fun, fly FPV. Keep it out the water. Jeez. And guys, so I know I said I wasn't going to test this thing, um, but it was so dry after getting everything sprayed off and after just taking a look at it, I, I just had to try. Um, We are good to go. It's still going to fly. Uh, VTX is legit. Camera, legit. A2 critical. Run cam 2. Not working. Going to put it in some uh, rice. We're going to see if it'll come to life. A2 critical. Funny enough, I went ahead and just double tested. And it works. The original pre-production model. I don't know how long it's going to work because I've gotten it to power on once or twice before. But then it wouldn't. So we'll see. But um, I have a run cam so I can still fly. Fly safe, fly smart, fly for fun, fly up, PV. Peace. <laughs>